Hello, this is Cindy at CindyBDesigns.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel today. And we are going to be making this fabulous fall card here. Thanksgiving is almost like the unforgotten holiday, even though you prepare for it for weeks in advance. But card-wise, not so much. More for fall cards than anything else. I can't tell you how in love I am with the Swirly Scribble Thinlet Dies. That was a mouthful. I have done so many beautiful projects with these dies here, and they're just awesome. And I thought that I would share a couple of them with you. Here is a Halloween card that I made, and to get the leaves, that those thinlets also have like two little leaves in them. Ran them through an embossing folder, just kind of curled them up a little bit so I can get some dimension there. And this is the exact same, no, we're using the midsize. This is the large one here. And I just made this adorable little pumpkin. And the next one is this really cool Santa where I used all three sizes of those little scribbles in there to make myself a snowman. So today we're going to be making a fall wreath. And everyone's jumping on the bandwagon of making two cards at one time since you have everything out. I figured I'd get, go ahead and join that. So as you can see by my card, we have some really cool stuff going on here. And I'm going to show you how to make it. First off, I guess we better go over some supplies a little bit so I can zoom out. You're going to need the swirly scriblets, thinlets, dies. I'm going to be using Paisley's and Posies for our sentiment of thankful, grateful, blessed. We're going to be doing our sentiment embossing, so you'll need some gold embossing powder. You're going to want to go ahead and grab your hardwood stamp or any kind of large stamp that's, you know, fallish, woodsy, something like that. We're also going to be using Holly Berry Happiness, and all we're doing is using those two little images right there. And this is a Christmas set with coordinating with a coordinating punch, which is great. And I love the position of where this image is on the punch. It's on the edge, and I figured out a way to stamp it and punch it, go on through, and not be able to take up a ton of cardstock. I chose this because if you're mass producing, sometimes it's just a lot easier to use a punch. That's how I feel anyway. You're going to need some scrap pieces of very vanilla cardstock, and you want to keep them in the one inch width range, and you'll see why as we start to punch everything out. Basic materials, Versamark, Snail, tweezer scissors for my sample card here these little sequins I save a lot of my stuff from paper pumpkin and just throw it in a jar and pull it out when I need it in the new holiday catalog there is this great gold twine we'll be using that and then for designer series paper, we have, this is Moroccan, and this comes out of the warmth and sheer. I love it. I love these colors together, and I can't wait to make this card, since I already kind of made this one. So I'm going to have all of the dimensions and measurements and everything like that underneath in the description on YouTube and and, my, and on my blog at cindybdesigns.com. I'm doing this car for a couple different reasons. For the midweek inspiration over at the papercraftcrew.com and also for the Card Maker Magazine Card Corner Challenge. I always get that hashtag messed up. And it was to make a card for a veteran and send it out. So I thought, well, Let's just go ahead and do three. Let's go ahead and get this started and make some beautiful cards. Already gone ahead and I've 
done a lot of prep work because both cards are going to be the same but just in different colors. So what you want to do with one of your pieces of Very Vanilla is that you can take your Wink of Stella pen and just use that all the way across there because we want a little bit of shine. Or a couple years ago Stampin' Up! had in one of their holiday catalogs, this shimmer spritz, and you know if I like something, I keep it. Are you tired or not? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shake this up, hold it, do a couple spritz, and it's just going to give you that little background shimmer that I'm really after in these cards that I am making. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside to dry. And the next thing that I want to do is we're going to go ahead and die cut our wreaths. I've already gone ahead and done three, but I wanted to show you how to do the fourth one, even though it seems like, okay, this is a no-brainer. But a couple good hints. This is my big shot. I have my magnetic platform underneath here. I have my pre precision base plate on top. I scored and found a piece of textured soft suede cardstock. I am going to be using that. And this precision base plate, it just really helps you to get, this die is very intricate if you look, it just helps you to get really good, you know, precision cuts. So since I'm going to hoard this, I'm going to maximize my paper. So remember, platform, shim, paper, die, and then just put a cutting plate on top and go through. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but it goes through. Okay, I'm just going to go through one more time. I'm going to set all of this aside. And this is how it comes out of the die. Easy enough to pop all these out of here. All you have to do is use your pokey tool. They come flying right out. If you don't have a precision base plate, grab some parchment paper or wax paper. Put your paper down. Put the wax paper down. Put your die on top and then run it through. And you're going to be cool. Instead of taking my pokey tool and doing every single one of those little holes, Stampin' Up! has this fabulous new tool that I didn't think I'd really get into and like, but I love it. It helps you get all the... Well, just watch. It comes with this here. I don't use that. But these little bristles here, it gets into these little holes. And I just normally hold mine up. and go around it. And I like to use this because the pokey tool sometimes it'll leave a little poke in your cardstock. And I don't want that. So you can see how well it's gotten everything out. I'm all thumbs today. And it's all ready to pop out just like that. I like to go around the edges first. Be really careful. This is a super intricate die. Okay, then I just have two more in there. I'm glad I found this soft suede card stock too. It's a great way to add some real subtle texture to your projects without having to pull out an embossing folder. So out of that set of thinlets that I showed you, there's three sizes. This one that we're working with, it is the largest, okay? So that's what you want to pull out, unless you want a smaller wreath. That's completely up to you. You have more, maybe more options with this. I don't know. Add that one on top. You can just make a completely different card. And this is why I need to be quiet and focus on what I'm doing. So I don't turn into having like, you know, a 45 minute long video because I'm really trying to break that habit.
As you know, we're making two cards. I have soft suede here and basic black here. The next thing I want to do, I need to give these a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to turn them both over. How to get the dimension on this is you can either use what they call the bones of your Stampin' Dimensionals and cut them down, which I'm absolutely not going to do. This came in a paper pumpkin kit, however, it's sold separately too for foam adhesive sheets. And you get two in a package and they are a fit long. They're mainly made for shaker cards, but they work because I can cut them up into little teeny tiny pieces and put them where I can fit them. So I'm just going to pull a little bit off here. I like to use Teflon scissors so it doesn't gunk up my scissors. And I'm just going to start cutting some pieces, like little teeny tiny pieces. I mean, that one was probably too big. You know, I'll flip it over and take a look. But with the last card that I did, you can get this whole wreath covered very well where it will go, it will stay down for you. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and get my foam adhesive on the back of these wreaths and then I will check back in with you. Okay, as you can see, I have lots of little teeny tiny pieces of foam on the back. I'm going to set these aside. Now, on top of our colors of soft suede and basic black, I decided to go along with this color palette for my cards. I'll just give you a little quick sneak peek as to how they're going to look like you saw at the beginning of the video. And it's going to turn out very cool. So what I want to do right now is Let's go ahead and get these together. How I put them together was I got a piece of nine and a half inches by four and three quarter cardstock and then scored it at four and three quarters on the nine and a half inch side for a four and three quarter square car. I said card, but we'll ignore that, right? So I want to get these nice, so I have some good creases here. Figure we might as well start building up a little bit. So we're going to add some adhesive to the back of one of our designer series paper. Again, this is the Moroccan. I have a total supply list at the end of this video and over on my blog at Cindy B Designs. Check the Facebook page for the Papercraft crew and check their blog too. Okay, this grid paper, every quarter inch there's a mark. Since my card is four and three quarters, there's a quarter in there. So how I want to add this, lay this down is I need to use these guides over up here on top there to get this down straight like these lines and it looks like I'm gonna have a good quarter inch clearance on both sides so we want to check up and down you get one side down first all the way like this your other side is going to be fine if there's any overhang anywhere that's just something that we snip off at the end I'm going to set these two aside and we're going to move on to our two vanilla, very vanilla panels. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my wood grain background and just set it on my desk. 
going to go and take my Delightful Dijon ink pad and I'm just going to ink it up. Now as you can see on this card right here, I want this stamped off once. I want a super, super subtle background in here. So I'm going to grab some scratch paper, just to lay it on top, kind of give it a good rub to get that extra ink off, and then pulls off a lot. And then if my panel has ink on it, or if it's splotchy in some areas, I'm totally cool with that. Going to lay that down. Again, grab another piece of scratch paper, and I am barely rubbing this, and I do mean barely. I'm not pressing down or anything. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to bring it up so you can see it. It just gives me that subtle background that I need for this card right here I'm going to use Smoky Slate on my hardwood stamp set get that inked up I'm going to do the same thing again I'm just going to pull some color off and as you can tell, I'm rubbing much harder to get this off. Once again, I'm going to lay that down. Find something a little bit cleaner. I felt that having this panel be Dijon would be too much Dijon. This is what I totally wanted. It's really hard for you to see, but it's going to work beautifully. Check that out. I am really thrilled about how that turned out. I like this card better than I do the other card, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. I think what I want to do next is we need to get our sentiments on our panel here. So I already have my mini Misty out, and I put the thankful, grateful, blessed on it from the Paisley's and Posey stamp set. So I'm just going to put my panel up there, make sure it's in the middle, I need to pull over just a tad, so I'm going to pull it over an eighth of an inch, so instead of moving my stamp, I just went ahead and moved the paper, it's in an eighth of an inch. Next up, I want to get my embossing buddy and rub it on there since we are doing heat embossing. You know I keep my stuff from years ago if I like it. Another thing I kept was this Versa Mark Champagne. And I'm going to go ahead and add ink up my sentiment very well. I've had this ink for years and I've never had to refill it once. It lasts forever. I'm going to go ahead and close, going to, what is it with my language? Close this, get this a nice press. If I don't like want to smash it down too hard, because when you have small words like that, if you really smash it down, your letter is going to wick out. Then you want to open it, take it over to a light, 
like I am right here. You can't see, but I can see. So I'm very happy with the way that turned out. Now Versamark will stay sticky on you for a little while, so you do have some wiggle room and time to play. I'm cracking open my gold embossing powder right now, which is like not at a very good spot on my desk. It's on like the prime. We can dent this whole thing over on your desk and your life and your floor, which of course I'm terrified of. I'm just going to scoop this in because I can. If you find any flux, be sure to get a paintbrush and brush it off. That's looking good. I'm going to set that aside, move this aside again, hope for the best, get my powder bag one more time, and pick which end I want up, and remember, I'm an eighth of an inch in. Misty magnets, when they stick together, your powder bag or powder tool Get it all over your hands. I have enough on there now, and then just slide these apart. They hurt. Ask me how I know. I think we all have had a misty magnet blow up in our hands by now. Once again, I'm applying the Versamark. Close the door, give that a nice press. Open, check underneath the light. I'm looking pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and set the misty aside for now. I'm going to go ahead and pull back in my embossing powder and do the same scoop. We are looking very good. Okay, now that we have that done, just remember, does you have some wiggle room with Versamark. I am going to go ahead and heat emboss this. I am not going to do it on screen. But you all know the process. Let your heat tool heat up a lot so it's nice and hot. And then you want to take it to the front to the back until you watch all the powder melt. So I'm going to get that done and then I will be right back. This is so cool. Now that I have our image and sentiment panel embossed, they look beautiful. I really do wish that pulled off more of that delightful Dijon. So if you want to make this card, I would stamp it off twice rather than once like I did. I just feel that I think it would look better. Because all I was really after was just that really subtle background I got with this. So I'm really happy with how this card turned out. The next thing that you're going to want to do is grab your snail. And since we did heat emboss this, you know there's a little bit of warping going on. And you really want to put some good adhesive at the bottom where we did the heat embossing. Once again, line it up, and I need to zoom in on your grid mat. And remember, everything's cut to a quarter pretty much. So that's how you get it even if my fingers don't stop moving here. And you find your spot. I just found mine. There we go. So you can see how flat that lays from the side. Once I really press it down. See? It turned out great. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this panel, and then we'll go ahead and get started working on our little wreaths. 
So here is how we are looking so far. I think it's pretty cool. Before we get going on the race, let's go ahead and do some stamping. Remember these two images I showed you? I've already gone ahead and I have done stamping for this card because this is early espresso delightful to Jean I kind I really wanted to stay in that same color palette you know the usual neutral and couple colors however I have not stamped with this one so I brought in my little piece of paper here that I squirted with the shimmer mist and this one's going to be really different okay so the first thing I want to do you want to put both of your stamps on the block and I want you to see how I have them lined up okay I have oh I gotta phrase this like a circle in pointing towards me on both of them and that's how I got this to turn out really well and how I got on my sample card them to punch out really well too because of how I stamped them and how I was able to line them up with a punch it was super easy so with this we're gonna go ahead and grab our Delightful Dijon, and you're going to want four per wreath. Okay, so I'm just inking this up. And give yourself a little bit of room. So it's looking pretty good. I like to let the ink sit in for like a second or so. And what I use to help me to keep my stamps lined up too is on this block I have the Stampin' Up! facing towards me and the same with this block. So I know that I have it going on right when I have both the names facing towards me. So now we're going to go ahead and pull out the basic black because as you've noticed on this panel it was stamped with early espresso since I have that in this panel right here you don't really have to get too far like right over it but you want you want it looking good okay let's go ahead and start the second half of this process. I'm going to try not to lean in too much and get right over it so you don't get a headshot. But with photopolymer, it's so easy to see right through it. And remember, if it's not perfect, that is totally okay. And sometimes I do better not trying to be so perfect. Got it. Awesome. So this is how this looks and you can see that real subtle shine that we have going on too, which is perfect. Okay, now to get this punched out. Okay, really super easy. And this is why we punched it going down. One of them going down. So we can just slide it right in line it up and sometimes you gotta cut a little bit that's why I said don't go over an inch on these because then you'd be cutting all the time but you're gonna have to like right about right about the third one anyway so just get this lined up and go ahead and punch it out. And 
there we go. May not be perfect, but you know what? It's going to work. So I'm going to get these other three punched out. Then we're going to move on to the final assembly. I absolutely love how these are turning out so far, and I hope that you do too. Let's get to working on our wreaths a little bit. You know I have all these little foam adhesives on the back, okay? So my wreath is going to go right here. It's going to look beautiful. But then I also cut out a piece of smoky slate cardstock, just like I did with my other wreath here, because I have two distinct colors to go ahead and put on top of that. And then we're going to add all of our embellishments. But before I do that, I want to take some smoky slate ink and an ink, ink blending tool. Some people will use daubers. I prefer the foam. And I want to give this a, just a tad bit of dimension. And I do mean a tad. see that there on the edges that's all that I want I don't want anything in the middle just around the edges I'm going to peel off all these itty bitty little teeny tiny foam adhesive that I painstakingly cut going to center that on my card. Just making sure I'm in your line of sight. Yeah. Easy as that. And I put enough on there where it's going to stay. We know that. Next step, I want to grab some matte liquid adhesive. Tombow Mono will be okay. I prefer the matte because if it squirts out, you won't see it because it dries so you don't see it. I am going to put about a million little dots on the back of this little wreath here, A, so it doesn't squirt out, B, it, here, it, it will adhere really, really good. So you put it on to whatever makes you feel comfortable. And frankly, you got to work kind of fast because you don't want your adhesive, good, you're in my line of sight, you don't want it to dry. Like it did in the middle with there on me. Okay, I am going to grab my tweezers. I'm going to grab it at the very top here where I have no adhesive. I'm going to pull this back in, I'm going to lay it down, and I do not want it, now see, look at the mess I'm making with this adhesive right here. I'm going to bring it up close to you. See those white spots? That's going to dry matte, so I'm not worried about it. But I do want to put this on. So it sticks. Heavy block, let it set up. It's that easy. So what we want to do now is 
I got everything punched out. We want to make sure that we get the right color on the right card. I have them on glue dots, but look real closely. This is brown, this is black. So I want to remember what's what. And I'm just going to pull them off and go in fours. I'm going to put four on each one. Now with this one here, since it's at the top, I want my little berry thingies to show more so at the bottom. Other than that, I'm not too picky. They're on glue dots. Super strong. It's okay if they go in between. The blanks there, they're going to stick no matter what. Okay, so that part is done. I might move that one up just a little bit. Okay. I told you about my paper pumpkin, how I save different kinds of sequins and everything like that. So I'm going to pull off these gold ones and then put them in between. I did not just lose one. I'm going to put them in between where I have my little fall berries or whatever they're called. Okay, pretty, yes. Clean, simple, nice. Next up, Thread Trio. I'm going to pull length. This is the gold. Emerald Envy and Cherry Cobbler comes in as well. I'm going to pull length. I'm going to double it up. Use some good scissors to cut. I have one for ribbon, one for everything else. And I know I didn't cut down here yet. Might as well. I am just going to make a bow. And tie it. And fiddle with it. And that. I need my other one to turn out like that. It just depends on the card and where you put your embellishments as far as what size bow is really going to work for you. And it's going to be different with every card, but I'm good with this. This is one you want to grab your glue dots again. I'm going to put one on the very back of this. These guys are strong too. And they can be kind of gooey. Okay, I got this. I'm going to put this bow right on top of that. I obviously have strings that are not even. Let's get them looking all cool. And, my friends, this card is done. Okay there, my friends. That's it. We have two beautiful, lovely masculine cards here but there's just enough bling in there you know for us too so i'm going to bring them close up to you looks like i had oh this was that one i lost well when i do pictures it's going to be just perfect you know i really wasn't planning on this one at all but gotta get it right Kind of wondering why it's stuck in the first place. 
Okay, there we go. Now I can say I'm done. So check out this pattern paper and everything in here. Real subtle shine. The gold heat embossing gives that a lot of class despite the deep dark masculine colors. We have some dimension going on here by putting the black little wreath on foam adhesive and then adhering the smoky slate over it and just distressing the edges ever so slightly for more dimension. Nice bow. And here is our other card. So again, I hope that you appreciated this tutorial. If you have any questions about anything here, go ahead and contact me through my blog at cindybdesigns.com if you would like to join my Stamping Up team. There is a contact form at the top of my blog too on the right where the nav bar is. And if you're interested in any of these products, go to cindybdesigns.com and they will be there available for you that will show up on your doorstep within a matter of days. So also if you want a catalog, including the annual catalog as well as the holiday catalog, please let me know. If you're in the U.S., I'd be more than happy to send you one off. And don't forget that we have the spring and celebration starting up, oh wow, in six weeks. Lots of fabulous new products that I've gotten a sneak peek of, and I think that you are going to love them. So thank you for joining us at the Papercraft Crew and at Cindy B Designs for the mid midweek inspiration with a couple ideas to make some cards for Veterans Day or Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for stopping by to visit me today. God bless. Take care, and I will see you again the next time. Bye.